coaches, welcome back to another Modern Soccer Coach Breakdown. This week we're going to talk about centre forward play, how to create movement, where is the best place for centre forwards to start in the build up, what position should they take up whenever possession is a little bit higher and combining with the midfield and then where is the best places to exploit in transition. We're going to look at three of those things today. If you enjoy the work, please subscribe. If you want more of it, please subscribe. And if you want more resources around centre forward work, you can get it on the link below. All right, centre forwards, let's go. Okay, so this is a complex topic, largely because there's a lot of variables in place. The profile of the centre forward, the skill set of the centre forward in terms of strength, the relationship of the centre forward with those attackers around them, the shape of the team, the philosophy of the coach, and just the tendencies of how they play can all be factored in to what type of movement is more effective and when. So there are a lot of variables there, but if you have frameworks in place and general principles around movement, it can be easier for other positions to understand timing. It can be easier for the team to understand reference points. And it can be difficult for the opponents to read as well, obviously resulting in more chances. So today we're going to look at largely a framework around 4-3-3, 4-2-3-1. A number nine playing on the highest line. We're going to look at the opportunities that we can create through that positioning with build-up, with combination play and in transition. Here we go. Okay, so the first one we're going to look at is when the centre-backs are on the ball and building up. Now, this is overlooked a lot in terms of session plan and sometimes you see some goals too many goals at the halfway line and the center forward isn't even involved in build up play work and i think there's an opportunity there that's sometimes missed i think the center forward is a huge huge part of build up play so the position of the center forward can dictate so much towards the success or the difficulties that a team can face when they are building up and progressing possession. So where should the number nine go? Ideally, I would not want the number nine in the same line as the ball, because if you're playing and you're utilizing those inside channels and you have the sevens and elevens and there's an eights and the tens looking at those inside pockets, you also don't want the number nine on the same pocket because it can overcrowd it. And if you do progress the ball into those spaces, it's very, very difficult to play a straight ball then in those pockets to the number nine who's already in there, leaving them really the only option for them to go is out away from the goal, which is obviously going to be less effective. And I think an optimal position to take is on the weak side shoulder of the weak side centre back. And that has two benefits. Number one, as the ball circulates around the back four, the opposition back four will also move with that there as a reference point and then by staying on the weak side you then ask questions of the center back weak side center backs movement where they don't want to step too much to cover the other center backs so that can open up some space but the biggest one is that that weak side center back ideally wants to see the ball and the player in one shot and if you're on the weak side, they have to constantly check their shoulder, look around, check their shoulder, look around, and see the ball on the weak side. And that creates an opportunity where the centre forward can move at the right time whenever maybe the centre back isn't looking and create that space for a run or even better, create a 1v1 opportunity closer to goal and hopefully score. The second one is something that has come into the game in the last few years. I've seen Haaland do this, and this is the centre forward spending more time offside and playing behind the last line. Now, this works if the opponent aren't pressing. So there's no real urgency for the team in possession to play forward quickly. So they're not going to be offside. So if they lag behind the two defenders on the weak side and the ball is being circulated across, those defenders are constantly aware of where that forward is now they can say well they're not part of the play but when the ball is then played into midfield and the opposition have to step with a midfielder it will probably open up space in front of the center backs because of the knock-on effect of the midfielders jumping out now that is the right time for the center forward to then pop into the space 
and then stay on side. And then one of the center backs is probably going to be alarmed by that. So he's probably going to react and jump out. And that can then unbalance the defensive line to maybe create another attacker in that space. So it's all about timing here and all about team profile, whether you have that patience in possession. But it's something that if you get those two right, this can be a really, really good way of using center forward movement to create opportunities for other players in the final third to hopefully score. All right, coaches, we we'll take a quick break here. If you enjoy the center forward work, I'm a big, big fan of positional work. I'm a big, big fan of functional work. When you're looking at that timing and you're looking at those relationships, sometimes it needs to be slowed down and sometimes those situations are really good to have conversations around those team profiles or around player profiles of something that you're working on specifically on a different type of movement. If you're looking for more ideas around that there, we have tons of resources on the Modern Soccer Coach website. We've just got a positional book that we've just released. It's on the link below. We've also got Center Forward ebook as well that you can have a lot of different variations through exercises around movement and around that repetition around creating that yard or two in the final third and hopefully creating shots on goal as well so you can get those on the link below really appreciate the support okay last one here we go okay the last one in transition and this is a really really simple one where you can have huge amount of gains if you're defending in a system that is maybe allowing or inviting the opponent to come forward a little bit and maybe giving those outside fullbacks a little bit of space to progress the ball before maybe condensing space higher up the pitch and then trying to catch them in transition this is a really really good one where you can invite the fallback a little bit higher and then once you win the ball is the space open and does that player who has won it or has played possession forward, does that player have an opportunity to play forward into the space that the fullback has vacated? And if they do, can the centre forward then take one of the centre backs into that position and maybe use their speed if they have it or maybe use their skill in a 1v1 opportunity or maybe hold possession and wait for a runner to get into the final third as well but using space that full backs vacate it's away from goal but it's enough space where again if the profile of the player is speed and skill then it can be really really beneficial and you can create something off that for sure similarly if the center back is progressing possession sometimes the tendency of the forward is to follow the player in possession but similar to the build-up picture we showed earlier if the center forward stays on the weak side shoulder of the other center back, then center backs are less likely to work in tandem of step and cover and step and cover. And you have more of a chance of isolating them because they don't want to leave a center forward in 15 yards of space if they lose the ball. So you create a huge question for the opposition center backs when the forward stays there because now the center back doesn't naturally move across, maybe has to stay. And again, it creates a 1v1 opportunity potentially when you win the ball or even better, it creates a 1v0 opportunity if the center forward has the profile to get into that space behind and the movement is right, the time is right and the service is right. You can be really, really effective in that transition as well. So there you have it coaches, just some ideas around movement in the final third. The one thing we didn't look at was in the penalty box and it, it could arguably be one of the most important ones to look at and we didn't have time to cover it today but if you want us to look at that there just give this a like, put something in the comments below, make sure you subscribe and we'll take a look at it in the next few weeks. If you're a player and you're looking for some ideas around movement or you're looking for some feedback around movement Maybe we'll do a player one. Maybe we'll do a player one. Um, check out the Modern Soccer Coach website. There's analysis on there as well. And if you reach out and you want a little bit of extra individual work or feedback, we will gladly, gladly cover that topic for players as well. So the one aspect is looking for it as a coach and the other aspect is looking for a player. Well, what if I have these traits and I'm looking to maximize them a little bit more? Where are the opportunities in the game to do that? We can take a look at that for you, Modern Soccer Coach Analysis as well. So I really, really appreciate you taking a look at it. 
forward movement is a huge huge part of the game and like I said at the start sometimes build up play has the ability unfortunately to overlook ball progression to the extent that it's including the number nine sometimes it's a back four and a holder or a back four and midfielders and it's build out after a press and get to the too many goals at the halfway line but success in the game will largely be determined by your actions in the final third um how much you can create and it depends on the level how much you can score as well and, and convert that into goals so forward movement is so so important and i'm a big big believer that the more you work on it on the training field and the more deliberate you are around practice design and also supplementing that work like i said some of the work we have below on the resource of modern soccer coach with individual work around that there are unit work around your forwards and that nine is involved with the sevens and elevens and how they work off each other or if it's a front two if it's two nines or if it's a nine and a ten and you like that profile the more work you do around that and the more you can communicate and show and discuss that usually that results in more success in that area so again i really appreciate your support again if you would like more of it please just let us know in the comments below thank you so much i will see you next week goodbye 